Hey everybody, it's a Chess Rivals, me and Grandmaster Simon Williams going at it for let's hope would be another epic brawl. He and I have had two incredibly epic matches. I mean, it's been, it's been fun. So I just hope that we can continue to live up to that. But alright, let me go and find Simon and, uh, and send the challenge. I assume Simon and I are friends. Uh, we may not be actually. So we both just do a bunch of work. Uh, I haven't played, so there's nobody online recently. That means i got to go down to the players list and find him that way. There he is, Ginger GM. Here we go. We're going to start out with a best of three in three minute, a best of three in one minute, uh, and then we're going to play a best of three Fisher random. So this is like a triathlon for for putting all the chess skills to test, right? Standard blitz, the bullet skills, and then the Fisher random uh, skills, whatever that is. So here we go, starting, and uh, the challenge has been set, and it's on, it's on. Here we go, playing 3-0. Now, if I remember last time, I had some good positions to start out in our match. Uh, we're very equally rated here, which is nice, but I felt like I played a little too slow, so let me... Uh, let me see if I can fix that problem and speed up just a tad. Well, if he wants the winnower, then I want the whole thing. I'll play for that. What does he want? Does he want the castles? Nope, he wants the poison pawn. All right. Poison pawn it is. This is all theory, of course. D takes C3 that early. Wow. That's a little bit strange. I guess I'm just going to play F4 anyway. I think it's just going to transpose, yeah. So nothing, nothing special is going to happen here. Okay, now he's now he's definitely going all in, right? He's definitely all in now, and so I'm just going to play for the typical way that you try to dislodge that pony, which is to strike with g4. You can play both rook to g1 and g4, which has instructional... It has benefits that the rook can come to the third rank at some point. Uh, or you can play for h3 and g4, and now if he gives check and you move the king, he just has to run away, so it's really NBD. Um... It's really NBD, I think. Except that he can take on G4. Wow, am I just that much of an idiot right now? I might be. That might be what I am. I might just be that much of an idiot right now. Okay, but if I take on G4, queen takes. Um, and still, I just move my king back. No, then he can play queen to H4 check. If I take and he takes, and then I move my knight to C3... I've renewed the threat to take on g4 and um, take on f5, and I've defended my bishop at the same time. But this is not what I intended to get. So maybe against this early knight f5, rook to g1 first with the g4 idea is the more appropriate way to play. But at this point, no sense in crying over the spilled milk that is my position. Um... No sense in crying over the spilled milk. Was queen to e1 better? And then on f3 check, I could play king d2. Ooh, he should have played knight f5. Knight a5. I don't know what he's doing with that. I'm, I'm happy that he did not play knight a5. That is a fact. So I guess I'm going to play bishop to b2, right? I mean, what's the, what's the trick? Why is that not the right thing for me? I don't know. I think that that definitely makes the most sense for me. Now what I'd really like to do is prevent him from castling. But he's going to get queen takes f4 check. Man, how I wish I could just prevent him from castling here. So if I play rook h1 and, and then we, we kind of castle by hand, I guess um, he's going to castle long and I'm going to just enter into the 7th rank. Um, it's all out counterplay at this point. This is a crazy, crazy position to start. Um... If I can put the king on c1 and walk it to b1, I might be able to castle by hand. And in positions like this where you've lost the right to castle early, you have to be careful not to become overly obsessed with the idea of fixing what was your biggest weakness, right? Your king. Because if, if counterplay presents itself and you're not getting checkmated, it might be more important that you just keep counterplay going. So I'm going to play knight to e2 now with the idea that I'm opening the door for my queen on g3 to swing over to c3 and trade. Because if I get the end game, my rook is on the 7th rank. Now the king in the center is no longer a weakness, but an asset, right? 
Um, so let's let's call his bluff and just go take this pawn. A pawn is a pawn. Um, queen to c3 was also possible, both last move and this move. But what was the point in doing it? I don't think there was one. So I'll play bishop to c3. Blocking his threat, attacking the knight. Hopefully if he... Okay, he moves, but, but now... Can I play queen to d3 and just force a queen trade? It doesn't force a queen trade. I can play knight to d4, and then where's he going next? I don't know. Apparently that's where he's going. He's going to offer the trade. I'm going to allow this whole queen e2 check thing. I know it's not ideal, but I couldn't calculate whether or not I should just take on c6. I probably should have just taken on c6 and played the opposite color bishop position. Um, up a pawn, up the g pawn to be exact. But I seem to have missed that opportunity. Uh, let's check. Take on a7. Is he really going to survive this? I don't think so. Boom town. Doesn't matter where he goes, I'm gobbling up that rook. Go after the seventh rank. Come in. Come around. Somehow he's not made it immediately. That's a little frustrating. What is going on here? Somehow he's surviving this for now. Ugh. That's how you roll. That's how you roll. You simplify. So anyway, one of the instructional points of that game was that after butchering the opening, I focused on counterplay as much as I did about castling by hand on the queen side. Because the point is, sometimes if you make a mistake, people get overdone with the thought that I have to now fix this issue of my king. Instead of looking for you know the opportunity to make the king's position work where it is and keep pressure on your opponent. So sometimes you have to think like that and and not just uh, not just castle by hand. As you can see, if I was able to get to the end game, the king being in the center would would now be an asset, right? It would no longer be a uh, a hindrance of my position. Now, um, that's not exactly why I was able to win. I mean, obviously after that, I, I blundered and we pretty much got a time scramble. But if I hadn't given up the g pawn, I feel like I was better anyway in the opposite colored bishop situation. So, wow. Well, now he is just all out all-out funky business right now. I don't even really care that much about his knight coming in. It's just counterplay now. If he's going to en passant, boom ya, yeah, boom ya. Yeah. I don't think so, Simon. I don't think so. This might have been, this might be hack attack a little too far, buddy. Yeah, we'll just get rid of that light square bishop. It opens up. Opens up the queen side anyway. Which should be kind of useful. Open the B file. If he plays h5, I'm debating if I should just ignore it or take it. I think I'm going to choose the former. I'll just ignore it. Now remember, if I win this game, that's it. I take the 3 0 portion of our battle. Okay, so he just doesn't even care right now. He's playing, playing like a honey badger, huh? He doesn't even care about what I'm doing. Well, we will see. I feel like the in-game 
offers me some decent chances. I can establish the knight on f4. But, I mean, the position is relatively unclear for sure. So if I play knight f4, if knight to b4, again, he takes on g6, and then I take on a2. He plays queen h7 check, and I come up, he gets knight g5 check. I guess I assume I can't survive that, right? We're going to assume that I'm going to lose that. Um, so that's an interesting, interesting situation here. Should I, how should I defend the pawn then? Like rook f6, if he plays knight e4, then rook f4. I guess I kind of like that idea. But if I play rook f6 and he just plays rook h1, then I really, really created some coordination issues for myself. It's kind of scary. Huh, I don't like my position now. I don't like it at all. Maybe I need to just buckle down and play some D, huh? Play some defense. If I play knight f5, no, knight f5 doesn't work. All right, I'm going to go for knight f4. I'm struggling to see the best ways to defend my position. That's the honest truth. So I'm going to try to keep going for counterplay. Ooh, he really wants to mate me now, huh? He's going to sack on f4. He's going to sack on f4, but we'll see. Maybe I can get counterplay in time. c4 is kind of a dynamic move to sort of switch things up, right? Oh, I thought I could defend that easily, but apparently I can't. Ah! Looks like I'm going to be mated. Yeah, very nicely done by Simon here. The whole thing. Even knight f6, I think, is the easiest way for him to get mate. <laughs> Knight f6, if I take rook h8, king g7, rook h1 to h7 is mate. So, yeah. But I have this little crazy trick in between. Just to see if I can mix it up enough to, to play a few more moves. Before resigning or getting checkmated. He's trying to find the mate now, which I love about Simon. But probably the most practical decision is for him to just move quickly and take my rook. Um, finally, he does just that. Uh, which is now going to lead us to this position here, where I'm almost mated. Title of my autobiography. Oh, I should have played queen c6. I mean, c6 would have guarded c7 and hit the rook. Yeah, I just blundered that, honestly. Okay, I'm just sacking stuff now. All right, so we move on. I actually made that a little bit trickier than I thought I could, but this is it. This is the winner-take-all. This is the winner-take-all chess rivals best of three. I'll go e4 again. Okay, he's going to mix it up, play the Pierts, the Pierts, yeah, yeah, we want some Pierts, yeah, yeah, we do. All right, um, all right, so he's playing the opening known as uh, get a dubious position and then slowly try to outplay my opponent. That's what this position, that's what this opening is called. I think that's the scientific name of it. So, Woe Town. Whoa, town. This is where Simon is just totally at his best. Just all in, create the pressure. It's the kind of chess he loves. I 
They're like, who are you kidding, Danny? It's the kind of chess you love. <laughs> Touche. Okay, well, we're both in a wild and crazy affair here. Completely unsure what's actually going on, I am. Completely unsure of my potential in this position. Feels like getting the rooks to the D files about as solid of a cho as a of a choice I could possibly make, right? Um, the frustrating thing is if he takes, I'd have to take with the bishop here. That's a little bit misplayed by me. So if he doesn't see that opportunity where I can't take with the knight, I'll probably play bishop B three next. So that if he take, um, he sees it, he sees it. So I'm in trouble. Uh, but I could have been in more trouble. I could have been in worse trouble than this. A6 would have had me to in more trouble, I believe. Hmm. Who D6 feels so good, doesn't it? So does just rook takes E4, just sacking the exchange. But let's play d6 first, because he can't really successfully blockade that pawn. Yeah. And now let's just go to sack town. For sure. This is going to get real rough for his king. At least that's the idea, right? Hmm. Where do I want my knight? And how do I want counterplay to be to be had? I guess I want my knight no. Oh. Okay, if the knight comes to f3, you can go to h4 to f5. Where are the real targets? The real targets are like f7. So bishop c4 is an idea. I guess I'm going to play bishop to c4. Sort of a, a seems like a, a lack of a punch move, but that's because I, you know, I already, I, I didn't have a knockout blow, right? So he sort of sees that he wants to overprotect that bishop, which makes sense for him. So I'm going to play knight f3, get that knight back in the game. And head into f5. Okay, now he's just all in. He's like, well, might as well go for it now, right? Last game of the year, Dan. Can't hold anything back. So let's go for this. Last game of the year, Dan. Can't hold anything back now. I want to play rook to d2 next, and he has no checks. But first, I like this move. Where's the mate? I don't see the mate. And I really like this move because there's also no checks. So when the queen backs up, now I can, I can give check there and just win. But let's not do that. Let's take your first. I think we're going to bring the bishop to g4 to blockade all these mates. Uh, I'm struggling to play fast enough for some reason. That's normally not my issue. Darn it, I really blew this one. Ah. <sighs> I 
That was tough. That was tough to lose that game, right? I mean, where did that go wrong? I guess it went wrong when I went on full tilt here. The end game is just about equal, I guess, but... But somehow I didn't have the goods in this position, huh? Maybe I should have played queen f6 check. Oh, if he plays rook takes, I would go there. If he plays queen takes, if I take it, he can take it. That's the issue. So then if I take, he gets mate. So, you know, he had the pressure, and I just didn't have the, I didn't have the, uh, the, 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 uh, I didn't have the, the, I didn't have the, um, you know, the moxie. It lacked the mojo. Couldn't convert it. So he gets the first round, best of three in the three minute goes to him. But now we move on. Now we move on <clears throat> to the custom 1-1. One, one. But hold on. Let's go to recent opponents and play standard 1-1. One, one. <sighs> this, uh, this was the next stage, stage two. Round one goes to the ginger GM. Round two, uh-oh, here he comes. Here he comes with the bees. He's going to play his bees knees. All the stuff that he loves. He's playing all the stuff that he loves today. Ginger GM Chess 101. Let's go there. Let's induce F3 if he wants it. Yeah. And now we'll play a little tickle there. Okay, if he doesn't want it, we'll back up. If he doesn't want it, I don't want it. Uh, we will eliminate. Boom. Does he really want to play a four? I don't think so. I don't think he really wants that. Yeah, we'll go in for this. Call his bluff, right? I guess we'll push. Hmm. He says he can do this if knight takes e5. Rook takes c8, queen takes c8. I guess there's a pin on that diagonal, right? Last time I checked, I'm going to pre-move recapture. Always pre-move recapture, just in case. I'm up a pawn, but the position is, is wild and wacky to say the least. Now, I, I think that's the blunder of a piece. I think I have this move check here. But it's still a nutty affair. I mean, even if I win that piece, I, I'm not even sure what's going on. That's the honest truth. Um, but that's the key, is I take that piece. If I had taken the bishop, he could trade queens and win his knight back. And even though I had castles with check there, which might have been weird for him, because my knight hits the bishop, this is undeniably better. He can't take with the bishop, I win the queen. Can't take with the pawn. He plays there, which really has no threat. That changes nothing about the position. So I'm just going to castle, and now I'm going to take. And the game should be over here. Yeah, all right. First round of bullet goes to Papa Bear. Let's win this one right now and put it away, shall we? Put away the bullet chess affair where you would think I should be the favorite pre-match in the bullet portion. So hopefully that'll hold true. All right. Okay, sounds fine. Okay, sounds fine. Whoa, town. He's going all in. I think I'll just try to keep the bishop here, given the the way this one's being played out here. Let's, let's see if he wants that trade. Because if he doesn't, I was going to say, if he doesn't, I like my knight on f5. If he does, I'm going to take with the pawn, and now I'm going to try to Try to prepare something on the H file. Uh, that was a mistake by me. But now I'm now I'm playing a weird way. Admittedly playing weird. 
I admit it. I'm playing weird here because I'm going for the H file. That was maybe not the best plan by me, to tell the honest truth there. Whoa. He just goes for it, huh? That was stupid. Just blundering away this game. Bad opening by him, but I, I'm not I'm not playing very well. If I take, he takes and I back up and he comes in, he's probably right, huh? He's probably right that that's not going to be the best. If I take, he takes. Bishop back. Yeah, I don't think I can survive. Or can I? If I just take and then play Bishop all the way back to G1, can I then move my Bishop and slide over? I feel like I can. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. What's he doing? Was there something better for me? I don't know if I could untangle. I think a draw was the best result, but at least that puts me in the position where I can now get a draw and win the and win the bullet match. But that was uh, not not a not the best not the best play there from either of us. I don't think. Newsflash to the people: Danny Wrench and Simon Williams didn't play the best moves. <laughs> Breaking news. Okay. Hmm. I guess I'll offer the trade. Sure. Sure. Not anymore. Oh, shenanigans. Shenanigans. Why did I do that? Somehow this is okay for him, huh? It would seem, it would seem that he is right. Well, at least if I lose, we get to play another one. That was likely a little unnecessary by me. Honest to, honest, honest engine. Terrible chess. Terrible chess. Alright. This is it. It's coming down to the wire. I certainly do not want to lose the bullet to him. I've already sacrificed a ton of rating points with this bad play. Ugh. Ugh. What happened in that game, anyway? I mean, okay, like here I should have taken there and just played the end game. I actually have a little bit of counterplay. But, uh, but I just, yeah, that's what happened. I blundered the piece. 
Okay, well that was it, right? Had to play knight f8. Maintain the balance. But I did. All right, Simon, where you at? Rematch, buddy. Come on. I want to avenge that loss and win the bullet. All right. All right, I rematched him. I guess I'm going to go back to e4. I don't know. We'll see what kind of Chichillion he wants to play. Probably a dragon. He's all about the dragon. We know it. And he likes these Dragodorfs slash delayed castling and Delios. He, uh, he likes it. Um... Let's see, should I just take it? I think in this line I can just take it. Yeah, he gets all that counterplay. All that business. Whoa. Did I just totally miss that? Uh-oh, takes, takes, takes. I don't know. Let's go for it. Let's just see. Let's let him mate us in the middle of the board just to see what happens. <laughs> oh, he is queen to b8. Duh. Wow. Now that was a dragon win by the ginger GM. That was beastly right there. So apparently I'm not supposed to take on b5. That's a good lesson. Apparently I'm supposed to... Or I'm supposed to play something like c4 here, something ridiculous where I open up the queen side and hold on to the pawn. Either that or I should just ignore everything and go all in, you know, on the other side of the board. Which makes the most sense, I guess. Uh, given that, you know, I accelerated that attack in, in, um, in favor of guarding the f3 pawn. Because the other move white can play instead of h4 is actually bishop e2. To avoid all of these crazy tactics on f3, but but I didn't, so that was nice. That was very nice. All right, so now we move on. I gotta salvage some, you know, face today. I gotta salvage some. So we're we're gonna play chess 960 for the last. Oops. No wait. I want to play a friend, recent opponents. I want to play Simon Williams. To 963 minute. Um, hmm. Let me ask Simon what the deal is. Let me see. There we go. There we go. Now he accepts it. Okay, we gotta take a moment to think about everything. Let 
Man, Fisher Random is nutty. Fisher Random, I love this. This is so much fun. It makes you, you just have to start thinking immediately, like, what am I going to do here? Goes after f7. That makes sense, even though it also hangs h4. Did I just trap my own queen? You've got to be kidding me. What is wrong with me right now? That is unreal. I just trapped my own queen. That's the kind of trap that can only happen in chess 960. Ugh. Wow. If I had gone back to d8, he just took there, and that would have been just as bad. So so that was bad. Now he changes pace, as he should. Changes pace, as he should, because he knows right now he just needs to get castled. Got a rook and a pawn for the queen, but hardly even a pawn. Doing my best, obviously, to play this completely lost position. So where's the threat? If I take, he takes, I get another piece for the queen. But the other thing is there's no real threat for him. So I'm just going to ignore that whole thing. I can almost take with the rook and take here and have a ton of, ton of bishops for the queen, right? That might be interesting as well. So now, now there is a threat. If takes, takes, and takes, he takes on b5. And I can try to run the king out. All right, it's not ideal, but it might be the best chance I have. Try to run out now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. There was never a clear path to victory for him, and all I did was keep it messy. Coming back from being down a queen to start the game almost makes up for how badly I feel about losing the bullet portion. Ugh. 
being up a game and then winning and drawing. So that was nice. That was that was a big boost to the confidence. So now we get to play the same position. No, it's another random, random affair. Castle's long to start. Slight coordination difference. He's going to take the pawn, but I'm going to let him have it. Oh, I thought he should have taken the pawn. We're opening the center. Just kick him back, baby. I play a5, takes, takes, takes. It's almost good for me, right? Of course, almost doesn't count, but... So he gets out of the initial bind of the position. Probably due to misplay by me, but I'm headed to, to put a knight on c5, which is going to hit b7 and d7 and all kinds of stuff. If he castles long, I get d7 with check, right? Oh no, then the rook's on it, duh. So he should castle long now. Ooh. Really? Wow. Wow. I'm going to take b7 with check. Obviously, if he takes b4, I get d7, which I guess I'm kind of just surprised that he's allowing me to just go for all this. I just got to get my bishops in the game. That's the only issue here. The bishop pair is going to roll in this position. But I sacrifice the bishop development for the, you know, for the queen side expansion which at the time at the time seemed like a decent idea let's go back and hit the knight okay now it's time f3 is a good move because i'm threatening bishop d4 do it anyway if he gives check he's got nothing that's game over that's game over And a pretty redeeming affair for me to have lost both the standard and the blitz to be able to take this one down. I guess a rook is a rook, right? That's what they say. That's what they say. Let's just offer trades now. If he wants to trade, then trade. Yep, or doodle, scoodle. Ooh. I can almost I almost took on g8 just instantly. But play here first, and then I can take on g8. Game over. All right. Well, you know, not the best thing that's ever happened to my chess career. I'm really I I feel like overall. I mean, obviously, if Simon and I played a lot of bullet, I would be the favorite there. Given the ratings coming in, obviously that's not too hard to imagine. But Simon doesn't pretend like Bullet is his best stuff in the world either. So, um, But the three-minute one, that was really the epic one, right? So I got the 960, he got the three-minute, and he took the rubber match in the Bullet, which was really frustrating for me. I'm going to lick my wounds and come back for everybody and a future Chess Rivals. In case you're wondering again what you're watching, that's what this is right here. Chess Rivals, follow me on Twitter. Follow Simon on Twitter. Subscribe right here to the channel. Give me a like, everybody. I appreciate that. Uh, subscribe to Simon's channel. You can see his viewpoint and all the commentary that he's bringing over at his YouTube channel. All right, everybody. Peace out. Go get, go get that butterfly today.